Jonathan here at Colfax Math. Today I'm going to talk about probably the most useful theorem in construction, manufacturing, making stuff, and in math. And it's called the Pythagorean Theorem. It's actually surprisingly easy and really useful at the same time. And in fact, I'm building a deck out back and I'm trying to use the Pythagorean Theorem to make sure that deck is square to the house. Uh, so let me start. There are a few things you need to know going in. The Pythagorean Theorem only works in right triangles. So the Pythagorean Theorem only works in right triangles. The way you know to right triangle is with the little box in the bottom corner. And a right triangle is a 90 degree angle. And really in construction, the three things you want to be on everything is true, plumb, and square. And what that really means is that you have little boxes in the bottom of everything, right? When you want something square, it means it's perpendicular perfectly and it's a right angle. So the Pythagorean theorem only works in a right triangle. The standard in math is a capital letter for the, le a capital letter for the measure of an angle, lowercase letter for the length of the side opposite that angle. So if this is angle A, this is side A. This is angle B, this is side B. This is angle C, this is side C. In any right triangle, there's always two legs and a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle, and it is also the longest side in any triangle. So it's important to note that you have two legs and a hypotenuse. And then usually you use the letter C for the right angle, but you don't have to. And then the last thing we need to know before we start the Pythagorean Theorem is square and square root. So 5 squared means 5 times 5, 25. Or the reverse operation of that is the square root. Square root of 25 is equal to 5. Then once you have those little pieces, the Pythagorean Theorem is really easy. The Pythagorean Theorem says one leg squared plus the other leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared. So that's two. You have to have two variables. You have to have two of those things to find the third. So the Pythagorean theorem says if you have one leg and another leg, you can find the hypotenuse. Or if you have this hypotenuse and a leg, you can find the other leg. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. The important thing to note there is it has to be a leg, a leg equal to hypotenuse squared. Here's an example here. I have triangle that has a leg of three, a leg of four, and I want to find this hypotenuse. I'll call it C. So that says three squared, one leg, plus four squared, the other leg, is equal to C squared. Three squared is nine. 3 times 3, 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, is equal to c squared. 16 and 9 is 25, and that's equal to c squared. I want to get c by itself, square root of both sides, and c is equal to 5. So if this leg were 3, this leg were 4, this leg I could find is 5. So that's the Pythagorean theorem. You know, if they're numbers that don't work out to be whole numbers when they're square rooted, you could always use the calculator. Okay, here's another really important piece of the Pythagorean Theorem, is that if the Pythagorean Theorem works, then it's a right triangle. So that's how I use it in carpentry as well. They call this a 3-4-5 triangle in carpentry. So, because a 3-4-5 triangle is the Pythagorean triple. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So if you're trying to build a fence perpendicular to a house and you measure 3 feet down this way, 4 feet down this way, and you pull a diagonal tape or string, and this is 5, well then this has to be right. So you move this line back and forth with your 3 mark and 4 mark until you get 5, and that's how you know it's a right angle or perpendicular. So it works both ways. You can find parts of a triangle, or if you use Pythagorean theorem and it works, then it has to be a right triangle. 
So out back, I'm building a deck. I'll take you out there and show you that deck in a second. And what I want to make sure on that deck is I want it to be square to the house. So the deck's going to look like that. I cut this board exactly 10 foot, this board exactly 10 foot, this board 20 foot, and then this board 20 foot. So that's a parallelogram. I mean, it could be 20, 10, 20, and 10, but I want my deck to look like that. A little gap out, it'll be obvious, it won't look good. So the way I make sure I don't have a parallelogram and I actually have a rectangle is I measure this diagonal and then I measure this diagonal. And if those two diagonals are the same, then this has to be a right triangle and this has to be a right triangle. And that's how I guarantee it's a rectangle square to the wall. Um, All right, so we're working on a Pythagorean theorem. I'm building a deck here to the house. I want to make sure that it's square. So I have a parallelogram, which is easy to make because the joists on each end are both cut to 10 feet. And then the ledger and the beam are both cut to 20 feet. So I have a parallelogram, but I want to make sure it's perpendicular to the house. So I don't want a parallelogram like this. I want it a rectangle like that. So the way I do that is I measure corner to corner and then corner to corner. And then if they're the same, then it's Pythagorean theorem. So I'll show you. Sixty-seven and a half. Two sixty-eight and a half. So I'm not quite square. This diagonal is two sixty-eight and a half. So the whole thing needs to move that way over just a little bit. So again, the Pythagorean theorem is one leg squared plus the other leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, but that only works when you have a right triangle. So if the hypotenuse is the same in both triangles, then the crisscrosses in the rectangle are the same, and it has to be a rectangle. So Pythagorean theorem, math at work.